Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 112, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one is called <clears throat> Religions. Uh, and it's from the Spokesman's Review op-ed page editor. From the research I've done on world religions, many if not all of them have many tenets in common. First and foremost, no harm to others. In this holiday season, remember that we are all a member of the human race and thus all connected. If we can strive each day to be kind and to help each other, we will all win. Divine truths are rising to the surface of mankind's collective consciousness, and it is up to each of us to do our part to make this a better world for the benefit of all. We are all presented with that choice daily. There is a mass awakening occurring in this realm, and each day can be looked upon as a new adventure. Make love, cooperation, and compassion a priority, and we will reap what we sow. A joyful new year to all, so be it. And that's from Todd Homer. Thank you, Todd. It's very nice. Nice way to start out the email bag. This one's called Where to Find Titanium Titan Ore. Mark, I stumbled upon a weird answer. Asked my Google Assistant where to find titanium ore. Phone replies directly above hell. <laughs> where, where were the titans cast in Greek mythos? Hades. Uh, Tartarus, things that make you go, hmm, thanks, Mark, for doing what you do. Keep it flat. And that's from Nathan. Thank you, Nathan. That's great. This one's called For Calvinists, and he's talking about Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, Mark, in my last email, I misspoke and accidentally condensed my words to a point of error regarding God. I was trying to express that he knows all of us so intimately and is so attentive and deeply loving towards us that in the sweetest, kindest, most tender ways, he encourages us, making his close presence known. And so we are strengthened to overcome any flat earthly troubles, flat earthly, that's a good one, <laughs> troubles with lighter hearts. And sometimes... He uses humor. He wants to remind us that he is in control. Yes, and that surprises and miracles and blessings are en route. Flat Earth brought me much needed joy. I delight in our honest fellowship and in hearing the laughter of all of us friends. And that's from Anne. Thank you, Anne. This one's called PET, otherwise known as Pancake Earth Troop. Mark, please donate to PET, the Pancake Earth Troop. It raises funds to purchase and destroy by fire millions of paper globe earths. Your donation will really help. Donate today. I don't know if that's a real thing. And that's from Matt. Uh, I don't know if that's a real thing. Uh, I don't encourage anybody to start burning globes. Throw them away, certainly. Uh, if you want to burn them, well, make sure you record them on, on video and send them to me and I'll post them on the internet. Uh, but interesting. P-E-T, Pancake Earth Troop. Okay. This one's called Scripture Precepts. Uh, hey, Marco. Hope all well, dude. Thank you and company for the great enlightening info. Here's a quick set of scriptures I, I found which may intrigue you some. First is from Ecclesiastes 43 in the King James. Uh, one, the pride of the height the clear firmament, the beauty of heaven, and his glorious shoe. I'm reading this as it is. It's, it's interesting how it's spelled. Two, the sun, when it appeareth, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the Most High. Three, at none it parcheth the country, and who can abide the burning heat thereof? For a man blowing a furnace is in works of heat. But the sun burneth the mountains three times more, breathing out fiery vapors and sending forth bright bareness. It dimmeth the eyes. Five, there's only, uh, well, there's actually it's numbered screwed up, but it's all right. We'll get into this. Uh, five, great is the Lord that made it and his commandment is runneth hastily. And then from Ecclesiastes 24, uh, I dwelt in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. 
And five, I alone compassed the circuit of heaven and walked the bottom of the deep. And let's see. And then, O oh, ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven, swift is the sun in its course, for he compasseth the heavens round about and fetcheth, fetch, fetcheth. I never use that word. His course again to the own place in one day. And anyway, all praise, sir. And that's from Alzac. So thank you. That's uh, it's very cool and almost appropriate, even though it's only Saturday. This one's called From France. Mark, I would like to thank you for all your work. Your programs have helped me to find what has been forgotten for years. Like God is life and we should aspire the best we can all the time. Regards from a 58-year-old European who believes in most cases in what you state. The earth is flat. Thank you. That's awesome. All the way from France. This one's called Official Map of the US, U.S. Geological Survey. Mark, I'm trying to prove this to a friend. Is there a link to you have showing the official map of the USGS is as a muffle equidistant or did the powers that shouldn't be take them all down? No, no. And that's from MW. Uh, no, 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 no. And I did that as part of one of the clues, which was you can go to Wikipedia or just type in list of map projections or list of USGS map projections, and you'll see them all listed in, in a Wikipedia section. Um, just just fiddle around with the, the search string. You'll find it. Map, list of map projections, list of Earth map projections. Either way, it's projections. That's the key thing you got to throw into the, the words. They're all there. And yes, the, the USGS, the azimuthal equidistant, is that unique map because it is, is used by the USGS. It is used by the UN flag. It is, uh, it's got a reference to... Um, uh, an old Iranian scholar, and it is also the flat earth map, you know, used by different flat earth groups. Not all of them, of course, but some of them. This one's called Firmament Flat Earth. Mark, I hope that you are well. I've been watching your YouTube channel. While I do not believe the current narrative we are exposed to, I have questions about your view. I saw Capricorn 1 when it first came out and immediately thought that someone was screaming to us that the government did the same thing during the moon landing. The biggest question is that if we are inside a protective dome, how do we have asteroid and meteor strikes? What are your thoughts? Thanks for your answer. I look forward to hearing from you, Mike. And anyone who's listened to this show at this point knows my take on meteor and asteroid strikes. One, find me a, a, a movie of, of an, a meteor or an asteroid strike actually hitting something, even if it's the water. I'd love to see it. And two, even if it does, you know, you're just throwing rocks into an aquarium. It's not that hard to do. Again, expand your mind, guys. This is, you know, building a structure like this. If you're going to build a, a big terrarium for uh, some tiny ants, you know, what would you do? How would you do it? And to, to keep the ants from kind of questioning it. I know it's kind of a weird question, but it's all I got on a Saturday morning. This one's called something for Karen B. Mark attached is a link for a new show on Fox that will start in 2019 called proven innocent. Kelsey Grammer may be playing a corrupt prosecutor who put an innocent woman behind bars and did her time and maybe became an attorney an attorney where the show picks up. Perhaps you could share this with Karen B. She seemed pretty riled up over a channel named after this new show that neither of you eventually knew about, even though you said you did a web search on Kelsey Grammer. I only found out because I happened to be flipping through the channels last night and saw Fox was airing this exciting new 2019 lineup. I almost spit my water out when I saw the clip where the woman asked Kelsey Grammer, why do you refuse to see the truth when it's staring you straight in the face or something like that? Maybe there is not much traction for this channel because it was not run. It has not run its first show yet. Okay, there you go, Mark. Peace, William from Northern California. Hmm, interesting. And, and yes, I did know he had a, a new show coming out. I did not know what it was called. I, I know a little, little inside track on that. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll check it out if I got a chance and I will show it to Karen. Hopefully Karen's listening. Karen, you listening? Hopefully. This one's called no more falling off the globe. Mark, a flat earth puts Australia on top of the world with the rest of us. No more people falling off the bottom of the world. Yes, you're absolutely right. The land down under would no longer be called land down under. We'd have to come up with another nickname for it. That's from Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. 
This one's called Whidbey Island Made the News. Uh, Mark, they mentioned tinfoil hat people, but no mention of the flat earth. And the news is, oh yeah, this is the one. Uh, bright objects spotted over Whidbey Island said to be helicopter searchlight. I'm surprised they didn't go with the Navy base or Venus or swamp gas or the moon reflecting off of swamp gas, whatever it is. And that's from M. Malone. Thank you for that. I try to keep up on all the would-be news. This one's called Interview with Bill Andrews of Apollo 8. Mark, interesting comments from Bill Andrews in a BBC interview about the moon and Mars. And it's on the BBC.com. And the article says that, um, and it's from December 24th. It says, sending astronauts to Mars would be stupid. <laughs> Said, at, said this astronaut, uh, Bill Anders, lunar module pilot of Apollo 8, uh, the first human space flight to leave Earth's orbit, said sending crews to Mars would be almost ridiculous. And uh, he's a big supporter of the Remarkable Unmanned programs, but public support simply isn't there to fund vastly more expensive human missions. He can't understand why people would ever even want to go to Mars, which is interesting, coming from a NASA astronaut that says he went to the moon. Hmm. Maybe Bill's trying to say something. He's 85 now. Just saying. This one's called Moon. Hey, Mark, I hope you're doing well. I saw this moon zoom lens footage on Richie from Boston's channel. You probably have already seen, but it's pretty good. Aside from some atmospheric lensing at the beginning, I, I am reminded of the footage on Jaren's channel of the moon being refracted by water. Is that called the water's of absu in the bible a b s u e in the bible i do not know uh in fact he says ha i don't know just want to point it your way great job on your recent interviews though merry christmas best daryl thank you daryl that's honest that's uh it's great and i will take a look at the clip when i get a chance this one's called quick question mark my name is justin i believe i have i believe period I have two questions, period. One, why do we have winter and summer? Two, do you know that the powers that be are planning our genocide? Uh, we have winter and summer because the moon and the sun, most notably the sun, uh, take different tracks around the inside of this building like a um, needle on a record player. And do I know that the powers that be are planning our genocide? Um, yeah. I do, but the question is how many of them are and how many of them aren't, because they're not all on the same page. And, you know, there's so many levels of power. The hierarchy is just amazingly confusing and changes all the time. So I still believe in a happy ending. I do. I still believe in a potential golden age. Of course, I, you know, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's all anyone can do. That's from Justin. Thank you, Justin. This one's called Survival Pack, Please. Yo, Mark, my name's Alex from Southern California. I listen to your show on True Frequency Live all the time. I have the Paranormal Radio app. I have to tell you, I'm an avid and diehard conspiracy theorist and know enough about the aliens and the government that I could be a PhD in it. Do you ever play Warcraft? <laughs> yes, I do play <laughs> Warcraft. I keep the account going. Uh, anyways, I don't want to be anonymous anymore. You host an awesome show, man. And oh, I'm sorry, I should have finished that question. Uh, my character's name on Warcraft, you can look it up. Just look up in Warcraft. It's, it's called Mark Sargent, and the guild is called Flat Earth. So, and it's on Stone Mall server. So, Mark Sargent, Flat Earth in the Stone Mall server. If anyone wants to join my guild, by all means. It's a very wealthy guild, and uh, there's not a lot of people in it, but it's casual, and you can get just about anything you've done you, you want and I can set you up with all sorts of fun stuff. And anyways, I don't want to be anonymous anymore. You host an awesome show, man. And I think you're all right. You sound like a really cool person. I am not a really cool person. I, I am a, uh, I'm just an average dork, uh, I, with, with legendary geek skills. Uh, again, you're talking to a guy who used to own a comic book shop and play video games for a living and do all this other fun stuff and teach software to, to people. Uh, I really wasn't a flat earther, but I have to say I'm starting to become one, even though I really love space and all that. Anyways, uh, I'm back, back you up, man. Sorry, his grammar isn't great here. I'd love to hear from you. Send me a survival guide, man. 
I heard it on your show. I'll give you my number or my address. Just get back to me, brother. Aloha. Much love, man. And that's from Alex. And yeah, if anyone wants wants the free survival guide, by all means, just shoot to me an email saying, I want your survival guide. It's called Empty Shelves. It's about two megs. I can shoot it through email. It's easy to do. This one's called Another Conspiracy Lie Regarding Flat Earth Exposed. Okay. And what's it say? It says, hi, Mark. Haven't heard anyone explain this before. Yes, I am in the loop. Yes, for Flat Earth. I am not afraid to search everything in the scriptures, and this search upholds the still Flat Earth. Please forward this to Rob Skiba and others. This information makes the case for the Flat Earth even stronger. I have checked this out in the scriptures and have found a conspiracy about the Hebrew word Bo H935, translated as come, go, went, came. When they are not talking about the sun, but when talking about the sun, this word is mysteriously translated as was going down, was set, goeth down, until the going down is down, at the going down, go down. And original translation, phonetic, and there's a lot of little technical things here, and I appreciate all this, but it's a little dry to read. So, but thank you for all the the references, and I will shoot it off to, to Rob Skiba, and hopefully he can get something out for it. And that's from, sorry, let me read the last part. Above, we find another Hebrew word translated, risen, age 6965, be noble, barians, and search out all carefully. FYI, never fear to search everything out. May our Heavenly Father bless your work. Sincerely, Karen. So, cool. Awesome. I will send it to him. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I've seen your YouTube videos. I'm becoming more and more convinced of a flat earth. Do you have more information on Admiral Byrd and Operation High Jump? Why a multi multinational effort? Just a few questions. I have anything you could anything you could provide would help. And that's from Dustin. And uh, yeah, you can look up all sorts of fun stuff on Admiral Byrd. Again, I say at the end of my videos, do your own research and ask questions. Operation High Jump, that's all out there. And a multinational Navy uh, to protect Antarctica, also, it's out there. You can find it. But thank you for that, Dustin. This one's called Geoengineering on a Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Do you happen to know the purpose of the chemtrailing of our planet? No, I do not. I have no idea. Do I think chemtrailing is real? Yes, I do. Do I have uh, any idea what they're doing? No, I don't. And you could ask 100 people, you're going to get 100 different answers. That's That's the strange part. I mean, there is no consensus right now on exactly what is happening up there with the planes. Uh, surely all the new materials up there change the optical properties of the normal air, but how, if at all, would that change anything related to the flat earth model? I don't think it does. I, I don't, but again, I, I, do, I don't know what's going on up there. So I, I don't know how it re would relate to flat earth because I, again, see answer to question one. Uh, if you have any thoughts or resources on that, that would be great. Hope a lot for your answer. Sincerely, Christine. Thank you, Christine. This one's called Fairly Agitated Callers. Great show, Strange World 178. Uh, Mark, okay to read on air. Wishing you and your family a very happy holiday season. Really enjoyed the Christmas special, otherwise known as Strange World 178, but was not at all what I was expecting. No friends. Don't expect a flowery, cheerful, Charlie Brown feel-good Christmas special. Strange Worlds 178 was hard-hitting and wasn't afraid to probe the dark side of established beliefs and practices we see globally in this Christmas season. Why? Because in the truther community, Christmas is actually a contentious and tricky subject. It's even more tricky in the flatter truthers because many, if not most of us, keep a strong tie to one of the big five religions. For some of us, the religious tie is what helps propel us through the onslaught of derision and humiliation we are forced to endure simply because we dare question what is claimed to be a topic where the science is settled without room for more debate. Mark, I think you and Karen B. handled this delicate topic with much tact and sincerity. I appreciate your kind and courteous responses to those on both sides of the Christmas divide. I also attended your Christmas Eve hangout with Zulu and heard some discussion about this there as well. As a member of the truth community, I've also looked into the history of Christmas. David Icke has a very good talk on, the, on YouTube that any interested truther can go watch called, Where Did Christmas Come From? Well, not Jesus for a start. 
A lot of interesting evidence is presented in that video that is worth a watch and special thanks to Just Jack for hitting the bullet points during his call. I'm not offended by his call and don't think anyone really should be because being part of this community necessarily entails entering into uncomfortable conversations. Topics such as the shape of the earth, 9-11 vaccines, fluoride, and even the late Muammar Gaddafi all have to be revisited, researched, and reevaluated. To put it bluntly, being in the truth community means unlearning, researching, and relearning many of the things we once thought were true. Karen is absolutely right that there are some things we simply cannot declare as it causes way too much damage in our lives. To her and to all the others who choose to stay in the FE closet, and yes, I am one of them, or choose to not be vocal about things they have learned, I say that is totally fine. We really don't need to get out on the streets with foghorns announcing our message. It is way beyond that now. Truth has permeated the hearts of millions, if not billions, of people. It is a silent revolution that we've already won because the truth can never be suppressed. I have a quote for you and your audience. The truth is like water. It doesn't matter how hard you try to bury it. It'll always find some way back to the surface. And that's from K.A. Tucker. Why doesn't the truth manifest itself? And when can we as a world openly discuss the truth? That day is coming. Something big is coming. Flat Earth and the truth movement is going to hit critical mass. We all know it. It is very palpable. I would say to everyone as we embark on this coming new year, be happy and hopeful. The world is changing and it's going to be great. Best wishes for a happy holiday season and happy new year to you, Mark, and to all our Flat Earth friends and family. And when you pick up that next snowball, well, you're welcome. That's from Jack Frost. I don't know his real name, but uh, he always writes some good emails. And thank you for that. It's much appreciated. Moving on. This one's called Coast to Coast Interview. Mark, I would like to hear the interview on Coast to Coast. How long ago was it? I think I heard about the hollow earth theory there, which just made me wonder like I never have before. I've been wondering about the rapture timing lately. Yes, I believe in the rapture. Thank you, Don. And the Coast to Coast question, it was back in 2015 was the first one and the second one was in 2018. And the uh, Coast to Coast contacted me and said, hey, we'd like to talk about Flat Earth. And, and I went on and did it. Unfortunately, I had to sign a release form that said I could not put the interviews on YouTube. So if anyone wants the Coast to Coast interviews, I've got the audio files here on my machine and I can send them to you through WeTransfer because they're too big to send through regular email. Uh, so if anyone wants them, just, just shoot me an email and say, I want the Coast to Coast interviews. This one's called Flat Earth Clues Second Edition. Hi, Mark. Two things, sir. I heard a guy or in your Q&A what we would do with the $10 million, right? Yeah, if I gave you $10 million, how would you prove Flat Earth? He goes, I would company some fellow Flat Earthers to Antarctica. Whoever else is on board, send your email to Mark. Be warned, we will likely die. If there is a rich Flat Earther that wants to fund and supply that journey, even anonymously, let's get it done. Also, please, Mark, please make a second addition to your clues. This time, make it one video. We will assist you with the best clues to talk about. People in this community love you and your personality. I love, I believe a follow-up with a set of different clues and the same format would get more attention than the first. My name is Lamas, and I work at a jail as a guard. The inmates love this stuff. It gives them hope and helps them to feel significant again. I love all of you and love you, Mark. Happy New Year, folks. And that's from... Um, Lamas, thank you. Well, I, I didn't even occur to me that uh, people in the uh, penal system would would look at this, would look at flat Earth with hope. But I, you know what? It doesn't surprise me now that I now that I know about it. That's interesting. Thank you for that. Hmm. So yeah, if anyone knows has friends in jail, shoot them shoot them the flat Earth clues. Sounds sounds like a, a great motivational. This one's called 53 Days to Cross the Atlantic. Mark, it's an unassisted trip. See, the earth isn't flat. And he's laughing. Uh, it's a BBC story. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, U.S. man. Wait, 53. Why do you say 53 days across? Oh, he meant to say Antarctica. Yeah, this is the Antarctic story. U.S. man finishes solo race across Antarctica. Uh-huh. And tell me what system he used to navigate. The GPS system, the United States Department of Defense system, that told him exactly 
where they wanted him to think he was. Yeah, that's how he got across. I'm not saying the guy was in on it. I'm saying they just made him do this kind of a weird right angle and then came back to another point on the uh, on the shoreline and he thinks he crossed it. And, and he, I mean, give him a lie detector test. He thinks he crossed it. He didn't. And if you look at his map, it looks very suspicious. This one's called Space Force. Hi, Mark. It was your Flat Earth clues and interviews with excerpts that woke me up several months ago. Thanks for all you're doing. I'm curious. What do you think is the agenda behind Trump's Space Force? I think it's just a space story. That's all it is. Uh, I think it's just another drumbeat, no different than the face on Mars and the hexagon on Saturn and reclassifying Pluto and, oh, something hit Jupiter and all that other stuff. Uh, that's that's all I think Space Force is. And they can't officially do it. You can't make a Space Force. It's not going to be another branch of the military because no one would ever join any other branch of the military. The recruiting efforts, it's so tough to recruit for Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. And all of a sudden you're going to bring in something cool like the Space Marines, like Starship Troopers. No one, no one would do anything else. Why? Well, it, it, those, it would be so easy to be a recruiter for those guys. And of course, the first question would be, "Do we get to shoot aliens in space?" Oh God! I, in some ways, that recruit the recruiting questions would just be cringy. Uh, do you think, in his position, he would have to know the truth about flat Earth? No, I don't. There's a lot of people you want to act na acting naturally. I think Neil deGrasse Tyson's one of them. Uh, I think Bill Nye is one of them, uh, and the president is so far down on the chain of power. He's just a front man. That's all he is. He just goes up there and reads the teleprompter, shakes hands, and does his thing. He doesn't have any real power. Though I, you, anyone that knows me n knows that I think the only the last president with any real power was Eisenhower uh, back before Kennedy, and that's because he had gotten out of World War II and he was a five-star general. I mean, he was the guy that was over Patton and MacArthur and all the legends, and he could pull strings if he wanted. And that's, that's where his power came from. And he helped build the, the military industrial complex. Kennedy tried to have some power and he was punished for it. Uh, let's see. Is Trump trolling NASA? Nope. Is he protecting the firmament? Uh, inadvertently, yes. Or is he just deceived? Yes, he's deceived like everybody else. Trump doesn't know anything. There's going to be no reason to tell him. If you were a, a trillionaire, I know there's no such thing as a trillionaire, but if you were a trillionaire, actually there might be. Uh, would you tell Trump? Why tell him? What what benefit would it, you know, just have him say his lines? That's it. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Thanks, Kim. Cool. Well, those are my thoughts. This one's called Sea Change 911 Grand Jury to be impaneled. Mark, if was you clued me in about Building 7, it was you who clued me in. It You said it. The spell check, people. Thanks. This is serious stuff, so no movie quote for you on this email. Keep it flat and may all the truth come out. That's from Frank. Sent, my, sent from my iPhone. Please excuse any spelling errors. Well, it's not... Yeah. Okay, fine. I will forgive him in this case. Uh, this one's called Psychologist on Board. Hi, Mark. Thanks for all your work in the Flyers community. I'm a mom to three little kids, and I have a small private practice as a clinical psychologist because I'm still working there please don't share my full name or contact information over the air okay i will not i came to the truth about flat earth in september 2017 at first my husband thought i was having a reaction to my medication and called my psych psychologist partner uh based on what he said to her he recommended that he take me to the er she didn't think i it was meds but thought i could be it could be delayed postpartum depression with psychotic features <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be laughing, but it is funny. Uh, my husband did not take me to the ER. He just relayed what he she said, and that was enough to shock me into my new reality where suddenly I couldn't openly share something very important to me with my family and friends. I'm still very cautious about talking about it with my husband and others over a year later. I've been settling into my new identity as a flat earther despite lack of support, and the thought occurs to me that maybe my professional status as a psychologist could be helpful to others in the community who worry about their sanity. Since I have three small children and I'm working to support them, I don't have the financial or time resources to give my, very much back to the Flyers community yet, but at least want people to know that an FE psychologist does exist. And... I, for one, say you're not crazy. 
if there's something I am able to do with my limited resources to help in the Flat Earth Movement, I am willing. Thanks again, Katie. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Katie. Very, very much appreciated. In fact, you know what? I will shoot her a thing and say I read this on the uh, on the last show. This one's called, Hey, Brother, Behind the Curve is a hit piece. Another hit piece on you and Patricia out. I know you two aren't uh, talking right now. Hope that changes, but none of my business. <laughs> Just wanted to be aware of this idiot. Oh, right. Happy New Year, bro. Go dogs, Ryan, which means he must be in Washington uh, uh, State. And what he's talking about was a video that Math Powerland made uh, back in May. It was May 11th, 2018. He hadn't seen it yet, which was, he called the video Flat Earth Fraud, Behind the Scenes Footage, Behind the Curve. And of course, there are no Behind the Scenes Footage clips from Behind the, Behind the Curve documentary. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are, but they're they're definitely not released. It's not on some blooper reel, and uh, yeah. So no, behind the curve is not a it's not a hit piece. It is, uh, in fact, I still recommend uh, recommend it to anyone that hasn't looked at Flat Earth seriously yet. I've gone to multiple screenings of this thing in different states and and in Canada, and everybody has the same question. It's a huge flat smack. It plants the seed and everybody's got questions at the end. All, all the hands go up and it's great. So if you want to check it out, go to BehindTheCurveFilm.com. It's available on Amazon Prime and Google Play and iTunes and YouTube. And I think you can rent it for four bucks if you wanted to. And I don't get a dime from it. And that's deliberate. This one's called... This is considered crossing Antarctica. Mark, I'm sure you heard about the guy and saw this route, but it's too funny to not send. Behind the Curve was actually really good. I think if you look at it from the FE point of view, it actually shows Flat Earth in a good light. I didn't see it as a negative towards FE. It was not biased, but not negative in my view. And yeah, he shows me the uh, the guy, the Colin Brady. Colin O'Brady was the guy that supposedly crossed the Antarctic. And he supposedly went to the, the shortest route to the South Pole and then back from the one ice shelf to the something Ross ice shelf and to not that close to McMurdo in fact it, but it's the shortest distance between two points and it's very interesting he took a right angle to do it so cool thank you for that and this one's called Flat Earth Question Hi, Mark. I'm from UK and London. I've been watching your videos and totally for the flat earth, but I have a question that's been bothering me. If you say we're, we were in a dome with a hologram, moon stars, and so on, that means we have always been that way. What bothers me is we are just breaking into technology of holograms now. So how could we have had the technology so many hundreds of years ago to achieve such, such a big feat it is the, say it's the year 1600. They were still shifting in, <laughs> in fields. No, there's no toilets, let alone the technology to create fake moon stars, sun control, the weather, create a dome. I do believe we live on a flat earth. Just that's one thing stops me believing wholeheartedly. Many thanks for your time, buddy. Keep up the good work. Yours uh, truly, Terry. I'm 45 years old in Crawley, UK. And no, it's, I'm not, I'm not going to make fun of Terry because... I get this, I don't know, one in every 20 questions maybe, which is they think that that we created the flat earth. No, we did not. Whoever got here before us did. Uh, no, we, we have some great technology now, sure. Some pretty slick stuff, but what if you gave us another thousand years and we weren't at war and we had some sort of dedicated goal? We could we could accomplish a, a huge amount. And so, no, it, there there's another civilization if not divine, that's far, far more advanced than we are. And that's who built this place. Not us. Not even close. So thank you for that, Terry. This one's called Convex Earth Documentary. Hello, Mark. I finally looked into the flat earth theory. And like most people, I thought it was just a bunch of BS. However, the more I explore the subject, I'm finding compelling evidence that it may be a valid theory. And I'm curious about what your view on the Convex Earth Documentary is. It a hoax? Uh, no, but it's a bad production. The first hour of it is actually pretty good. Uh, not, not too terrible. But then by the time they got into the second hour, they were talking to an alien that speaks named 
Bilu that speaks speaks Portuguese. And no, oh, in the but the first hour is actually pretty good. It seems like legitimate experiments. Yeah, the experiments were, were legit. Uh, but I'm not totally sold. It wasn't some kind of elaborate hoax trolling the FE community. No, they weren't trolling us. They were trying to bandwagon us. It was they were a group from South America that said they'd been in it for like seven years, predating us and all this other stuff. And they really blew it by the time they got to the end. A lot of people online are claiming that it was an April Fool's joke. Nope. Thanks for your time. Peace, Tom. It was not an April Fool's joke. This one's called Just Watch the Flat Earth Clues series. Mark, I don't know if this email address is real or not. Giving it a try. I have a PhD in engineering and work in nuclear energy research sponsored by the government. I'm ridiculed because I believe the Bible and YEC. Still, your videos rocked my world. Not sure where I am right now. I keep asking myself, if you're right, who can be trusted? And that's from Stephen, who says he has a PhD. Who can be trusted? Uh, yourself. That's really who can be trusted. That's why I say do your own research and ask questions. Don't take anything that people tell you uh, at face value. You know, just do go out there and research your own stuff again, which is why the flat earth community is growing so big. I mean, people started going out to the beaches so quickly with high definition cameras. So really enjoyed that part. Moving on. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Can you also send me the Coast to Coast interview? Thanks, Dolores. Yep, you bet Dolores can do. This one's called Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mark, Neil deGrasse Tyson is now being accused of sexual misconduct. Looks like we lost Neil. He most likely, likely will be forced into retirement or worse, prison like Kevin Spacey. Who's next, Bill Nye or Michio Kaku? Okay, first... I don't know if Kevin Spacey is going to be going to prison. It takes a lot nowadays to go to prison. Bill Cosby, the, yeah, he had a, a long history and there were a bunch of women that jumped in on that. With Kevin Spacey, because he's gay, uh, it'd be a lot of men that would jump in on this. I don't know how that's going to work. And Neil, I don't know if he's going to retire. I mean, he doesn't exactly have a day job anyway. He just travels around the country uh, like a... a astronomy version of a jack-in-the-box and you know you crank him up and he pops out and says space is amazing that's all he does so I, retiring i know i mean yeah people start giving him grief or his numbers start going down he they charge he charges a lot of money to go to these events all over the place for the highbrow intellectual types moving on this one's called work begins on the mgm sphere in las vegas you know what i'm gonna use that pick or image. That's a good one. Uh, hey, Mark, thanks for the McSargent package. It's nice to see that you use the image I made on one of your thumbnails. Here's something I found. MGM is building a new concert venue in Las Vegas and another in London called MGM Sphere, which seems that will display a globe. Looks like they are really trying to put globes everywhere. Even in the promotional imagery, you can see that they use an astronaut on the moon. They really seem desperate to bombard us with globe images from every direction. Here's a YouTube video about the subject. Sure enough, here's the article. Uh, review journal. Casinos gaming. Work begins on 18,000 seat sphere at the Venetian. Wow, that is an interesting image. I'm going to check that out if you get it. Yeah, I don't know how long it's take to finish. But yeah, putting a, that'll be probably the, the biggest globe out there. So I am totally using that pick. This one's called Nat Geo. Finally, he mentions it. And, uh, okay, this is from Mike. And he kind of, he writes his letters in text speak. So you're going to have to bear with me. This is not a spelling or grammar thing. He's, this is as is. He goes, okay, last email on the topic of Nat Geo vid. Okay, Mark giggles, LOL. Hey, man. Okay, sorry for that other last email. I was always wondering why you didn't even mention it, that I had it on YouTube, unblocked it in the United States. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. In case anyone wanted to see it, LOL. Hmm, though, took you two weeks to do it, but you finally mentioned it. But okay, so Yep was saying, Yep, man, I caught your Q&A uh, 111 show and heard you mention it. By the way, I even heard you read my email, which kind of caught me off guard, surprised a little but yeah, it's all good. Yep, I don't mind. But lols though, that it did kind of surprise me. You guys wonder why I have a hard time with tech speak. Oh, sorry. 
No, no offense, man, but I'm, I, will, I am going to finish this. Uh, yep, I heard you say on the subject line, and my ears kind of perked up for a quick sec. I'm like, hey, that sounded like one of my subject lines from last week. In a split sec, I'm like, nah, that could, can't be mine. Must be someone else's. But you read on, and yep, sure enough, it was my last email I sent. Uh, yep, I had the show playing on my desktop PC across the room in my living room, and I was laying down on the couch listening. Yeah, though, that's pretty crazy. Uh, it wouldn't upload and unblocked for you, though. But yeah, it was probably as a result from those things. There's a point to me reading this, guys. Uh, you'll understand when I get to the end. From those things that you have previously mentioned and you're trying 12 times before and this and that, etc. Well, hey, man, hope you had a very sweet and merry uh, Christmas or whatever we want to call it. And I'm wishing you a very blessed New Year 2019. And by the way, man, I've always had super immense respect for love for you and but for what it's worth, man, I totally stand behind what you behind you for what you did about the Logan Paul thing at Denver Flat Earth Conference. Oh, and another edit edition, huge respect and love for you about the epic speech you gave at the Edmonton Flat Earth Conference. Love that one too, bro. Awesome Denver speech that you had as well. Well, yes, I heard that one too. Blessings and much love. And so what he was talking about initially was the National Geographic uh, segment that they did just recently uh, is not allowed. You can't put it on YouTube, not without heavily, heavily distorting it. And I tried it six ways from Sunday and could not get it done. Uh, it's blocked only in the U.S. though. So I put, a, put it up on my channel and people can watch it in Canada and UK and Australia and stuff, but you can't watch it in the United States. However, I do have a low res version on my machine if you guys want it. Or you could just go to the National Geographic uh, website and type in uh, flat earth and you should be able to find it it's on the show national geographic explorer which i think is their flagship show and you can check out the 10 12 minutes that you know that i was talking on it and out of all the people that they interviewed during that the only pre people they left in were lucy lemons really and myself and I, I really thought they could have done more with that thing. And the, again it was going to be a hit piece because national geographic is a science channel but hey whatever so there you go so thank you for that and thank you back for the email and uh, there's nothing else i can do at this point uh, the national i cannot put it up on my channel i could put the audio up but i don't think it would do it much justice moving on let's do a couple more and then wrap this thing up before this will be the last one for 2018 uh just watch the flat earth clue series mark i don't know if this email address is real or not giving it a try uh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, this, he sent it twice. The Stephen Hayes one. Yeah, it's absolutely real. I love when people send me that. It's not like the old days. Back in the old days, if you guys remember the internet, you could send an email and it would take up to like 10 minutes before it bounced back and said that it's not a valid email. Nowadays, it's instantaneous and you should know that. So if you send out an email, you know, if it's a bad address, you do the experiment yourself. Uh, it should bounce back to you just like that. Let's, let's call this one good this one's the last one uh please read online hello mark hope all is well i am all about the water when it comes to flat earth nowadays when people ask me about the license plate that reads it's flat i tell them water water is flat if the conversation continues with politeness and they agree that water will always find its own level no matter the amount i then ask them what percentage of the earth did your science teacher tell you was water when they have the correct answer, which is 71%. And then I ask them, how can the earth be a round sphere like the images in your science book show you if the earth is 71% water, water, which is flat. It's all about the water to quote Jeffrey Grupp. Hello. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Oh, it's that stupid Saturday night live thing. Hello. I got it. I don't think Jeffrey Grupp is probably the best one to quote on that. I just quote SNL. Anyway, that's from a guy named Peter. Thank you for that, Peter. And we are caught up. And we were totally caught up before the end of, of 2018 with a couple of days to spare. Awesome. All right. Anyway, thank you for everybody that sent your emails and everyone's going to do it in the future. Remember, you can shoot your stuff to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net and until next time guys well 2019 next time stay flat